Imagine standing perfectly still in a large field with the sun beating down on you in 90 degree heat. There's a bug on your ear, but you can't swat it. You can feel yourself sweating, but you can't do anything about it. You also have to pee, like really bad. You want to at least shift your weight, but you're too afraid the graders will notice and you'll be marked off for excessive movement. Yes, shifting your weight is excessive movement at military camp. After 15 minutes of this torture, you finally get to move as you begin to march. This is my reality at Culver Academies, a military camp I attend every summer. Now, I know what you're thinking. Was this a punishment? And why would you ever subject yourself to this? Let me start by saying that this was completely voluntary. Although some are sent as punishment, most sign up after hearing about it from their family and friends. For me, my sister and grandpa's endless praise of the camp they attended prompted my entry to Culver. In the summer of 2017, I walked in nervous yet excited to hand in my phone for six weeks and see what military camp was all about. Now, before I relay my experience, let me begin with my main point. Culver's are everywhere. No, not the restaurant, I know. I mean, yes, Culver's are everywhere. But what I mean to say is that experiences like Culver Academies are everywhere. Now, the thing about Culver that makes it so special is not the fact that it's a military camp. The thing about Culver is that all the people there and all the things you do are things that anyone from around here would consider weird. None of the people I met at Culver are people I would ever talk to if they went to my school. And all the things I did there are things I would never do at home. But at Culver, you were thrown together, forced to have conversations and try new things. You have to learn to embrace the awkwardness of meeting new people, break outside your comfort zone, and welcome new perspectives that are completely different from your own. So here are some of the notable people I met at Culver, thrown in with some of the weird things we did there. On a typical day, I woke up at 6.30 a.m. with an hour until lineup. One hour to get my room from looking like a bomb exploded to absolute perfection, including no dust anywhere and a bed like this. And yes, I made that myself every day. Sarah, my roommate and best friend from the DR and I, cleaned frantically. Despite us being complete opposites, me clean, her messy, me always in a hurry, and her always telling me to take a chill pill, she is the best friend I could ever ask for. Jaya, a quirky and very energetic girl from India, runs into our room begging to borrow a uniform because she has talkie stains on the one she wore yesterday. See, India doesn't have talkies, so when Jaya comes to Culver, she has at least two bags a day. <laughs> Anyways, once we've cleaned, we run outside to line up, yelling at everyone to make sure they have their name tags and that their doors are locked. Maho, an eccentric and extremely tall girl from Colombia, immediately turns around and sprints back to her room while yelling in Spanish. Finally, the clock hits 7.30 and roll call begins, creating a cascade of here ma'ams outside. After breakfast, I start my day with water skiing, where I watch the national wakeboarding champion of Greece and one of my closest friends, Paul, do some flips. During lunch, I participate in Honor Guard, where we make performances out of flipping 20-pound rifles. That day, we work on suicides, where we basically throw the guns at each other and just kind of hope we catch it. Despite the difficulty of Honor Guard, it gave me a sisterhood. One built upon push-ups, bruises, and occasionally, black eyes. Don't worry, that only happened once. <laughs> I then go to sailing for the next three hours. My favorite class and a part of me that I never would have found if I hadn't gone to Culver. My favorite memory of sailing was this past summer, when I sailed with one of my best friends, Faisal. Faisal's from Jordan and went deaf at age two. Although he can hear a little on land with his hearing aids, he has to take them out when he's near water, resulting in a totally deaf crew. Now, if you know anything about sailing, you know how important communication is. So imagine not being able to communicate. <laughs> this resulted in us having to come up with a code for tacking, jibing, and everything in between. After all my activities, I usually would head back to the deck, which is like a cabin at a normal summer camp, and practice semaphore with Jaya, who I mentioned earlier, Sophia, and Salwa, who were both from Indiana. Semaphore is difficult to explain. Basically, you have two flags, like in the picture, and each pattern of these flags represents a different letter. For example, this is A, B, C, and this is X, Y, Z. But the C and the Z sound similar, right? So they came up with something called the phonetic alphabet to differentiate these letters. So now this is Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, which I'm sure you've heard of before, and X-Ray, Yankee, Zulu. Now, imagine me standing on one side of a large field creating these patterns at the speed of light. 
And on the other side of the field sits Jaya, who's spitting out these letters in the phonetic alphabet as fast as she can. Due to the difficulty of this, we practiced a lot, resulting in a ton of inside jokes with the funniest people I know and eating way more Takis than I would have liked to that summer because of Jaya. Every Wednesday night, I also participated in my favorite activity of the summer, sailing the Leadbetter. The Leadbetter was a 55-foot boat which required climbing masts, like you can see in the picture, in order to sail it. This made us feel like we were in Pirates of the Caribbean. And finally, most nights were wrapped up with a retreat, which is what I began this talk with and probably the weirdest thing we did there. I mean, marching around in a rectangle, holding a heavy sword, which I still can't explain for the life of me, and torturing ourselves by not being able to move, why would we do such a thing? As cheesy as it sounds, it was genuinely all for the people around us, the people we had met just six weeks ago. It was to show them how much we trusted and cared for them. Culver was a place made up of 900 kids from all over the world, India, Colombia, Mexico, Spain, Greece, and more, thrown together in a fit of chaos. Culver was an experiment, a literal leadership laboratory. It was a test to see if we could complete a puzzle made out of pieces that did not seem like they fit together and to find someone who could lead that kind of crusade. It was hard, yeah. In fact, I've had some of the most difficult days of my life at Culver, but being thrown together and forced to embrace each other for who we were resulted in one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. Culver taught me to break outside my comfort zone. It showed me how to have a real conversation and the true meaning of friendship as I learned from those who grew up with different cultures and perspectives. Culver taught me trust, hope, and persistence and it showed me the sweet yet extremely sour feeling of making friends from all over the world, only to be hundreds of miles away for the rest of the year. My message to you is to find your own Culver. Find your own weird adventures, your own Maho, Jaya, and Sarah. Find a group of people that you never thought you would get along with. A group of people with diverse perspectives that sometimes seem weird. Find people that make you have to break outside your comfort zone and try new things that you never thought you would like. It'll be hard. Yeah, and some days it'll feel impossible to continue. But if you do, well, perhaps you'll find a deaf Jordanian best friend, Colombian twins that are pro sailors, a doppelganger. I'll give you a minute to soak in the similarities. I know he's a guy. It adds to it. <laughs> or a forever friend that is the complete opposite of you. These are all people, all beautiful personalities with diverse stories that I never would have met if I hadn't gone to Culver if I hadn't strayed from the norm. So, jump into spontaneity. Initiate conversations. Don't worry about awkwardness. Stop overthinking, and most importantly, don't conform to what everyone else does. Because if you take that leap, or if you start that conversation with a simple, where are you from? I promise you, you won't regret it. Thank you. <laughs>